What does it mean to calculate simple interest using exact time? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is just one way that we determine the amount of time that has passed between dates. I'll leave links in the description to some other relevant lessons I've done about simple interest that you might want to check out, but let me just quickly bring you up to speed. Remember what is often called the simple interest formula. The amount in an interest-bearing fund at a given time is equal to the principal investment, P, plus that principal investment multiplied by the simple interest rate, I, multiplied by the amount of time that has passed, T. So that's just the principal investment plus the interest, and factoring a P out of that expression gives us the more common expression P times 1 plus IT. Our simple interest rate I is most commonly going to be an annual interest rate. This means that the time that has passed, T, needs to be measured in years. So to determine t, the amount of time in years that has passed between two dates, what we'll often do is find the number of days between those two dates and then divide by the total number of days in a year, 365. Or if it's a leap year, we may divide by 366. Regardless, dividing the number of days by 365 or 366 is called exact simple interest. But another common convention to calculate the number of years that have passed between two dates is to divide the number of days by 360, and that's called ordinary simple interest. Ordinary simple interest is a pretty common convention, but either way, whether we're using exact simple interest or ordinary simple interest, the one question that remains is how exactly are we going to determine the number of days that have passed between two dates? The two common ways are called exact time and approximate time, so let's go over what exact time is. As the name implies, exact time is what we would think of as the exact or the true number of days between two dates. It's as simple as that. So the exact time between March 5th and September 28th, assuming that they are in the same year, is just the total number of days between March 5th and September 28th. We count September 28th, but we don't count March 5th. So for exact time, we include the last day in the period, but we don't include the first. And hopefully that seems kind of intuitive, because if we invest some money on March 5th, then we might earn interest from the 5th to the 6th, so we count the 6th, and we earn interest from the 6th to the 7th, so we count the 7th, and so on. We earn interest going to the 27th of September, and then from the 27th of September to the 28th of September, we earn more interest. We just don't earn any interest on that first day when the investment is made. But whether or not that seems intuitive, that's how exact time is calculated. It includes all the days between two dates, including the last day, but not the first. So let's actually calculate this exact time. Remember that different months have different numbers of days, so it's often helpful to break our period of time into months. And if you don't remember how many days are in each month, you can use your knuckles to remember. Put your hands together like this, and your knuckles represent months with 31 days. January, March, May, July, August, October, and December. The spaces between your knuckles represent months that have 30 days, or 28, or 29 with February, depending on whether or not it's a leap year. You see there's April as well, June, September, and November, with 30 days represented by the crevice between your knuckles. So that can be a helpful way to remember. All right, so how many days are we counting in March? Well, we want to count from the 5th of March to the end, but not including the 5th. There are 31 days in March, so the answer is 31 minus 5, or 26. Then April has 30 days, May has 31 days, June has 30 days, July and August both have 31, and then we have 28 days in September that are being counted as well. And then adding all of these numbers up gives us the exact time between March 5th and September 28th. In this case, that is 207. So that's the number of days between March 5th and September 28th, counting the 28th of September, but not counting the first day, March 5th. 
So that's all there is to determining exact time. And then if you were using this to calculate simple interest, you would divide the number of days that have passed, 207, by 365 or 366 if we were using exact simple interest, and you divide it by 360 if we were using ordinary simple interest. Now before we go, let's quickly see an example of actually calculating some simple interest. On November 12th, 2017, a man borrowed 400 at 4%, assuming simple interest. The debt is repaid on February 20th, 2018. So let's calculate the total amount that he must have repaid. Again, remember our wonderful simple interest formula. We're trying to calculate the total amount paid. We know that the principal, in this case, is 400. That was the amount borrowed. And then that gets multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate, which in this case is 4%. That is our simple interest rate. And then we need to multiply that by T, the amount of time that passed between November 12th, 2017 and February 20th, 2018. And simple interest is most often annual, so we're assuming this is 4% annual simple interest since it doesn't say otherwise. So we've already got our answer set up. All we need to do is calculate T, the amount of time that has passed. So let's calculate the exact exact time. Again, we break the period down into months. So starting with November, how many days are we counting from November? November has 30 days total. We're not counting the first day, November 12th, so we can subtract 12 from 30 to get that we are counting a total of 18 days in November. Then December and January both have 31 days, and we've got 20 days in February until the end of the borrowing period. Thus, in total, we've got 100 days. And that's just adding these four numbers together. And now we're good to go to calculate the total amount that was repaid. We just need to decide if we're gonna use exact simple interest, where we divide by 365, or if we use ordinary simple interest. Let's just try both. Firstly, up top, we've got exact simple interest with exact time. So remember that exact simple interest and exact time, those are two different things. Exact simple interest refers to dividing by 365 or 366 to calculate the number of years that have passed. And exact time refers to a method of counting the number of days that have passed between dates. So for exact simple interest with exact time, we have our principal 400 multiplied by one plus the simple interest rate 4% or 0 0.04, which is getting multiplied by 100, the number of days calculated with exact time divided by 365 because this is exact simple interest and neither 2017 or 2018 are leap years. And this comes out to about 404.38, so 400 in principal and 4.38 in interest. Then we have ordinary simple interest with exact time. Remember, we're still using exact time, so our numerator in our time expression is still the same, 100. But ordinary simple interest uses 360 as the number of days in a year, so we divide that 100 by 360. Now, would you expect this total amount to be greater or smaller than what we got with exact simple interest? Well, 100 over 360 is greater than 100 over 365 because we've got a smaller denominator with the ordinary simple interest. Since the amount of time is greater when calculated with ordinary simple interest, you would expect the total amount to be greater as well. And indeed, that amount is about 404.44. So that's 400 in principle and 4.44 in interest. We'll go over the other method of determining the number of days between two dates in another lesson. Again, that's called approximate time, and put simply, it assumes that whole months have 30 days. That's obviously not true, but that's the convention that approximate time uses, whereas today we went over exact time, which counts the total actual number of days that have passed between two dates, including the last day, but not the first. That's exact time. One final thing, calculating simple interest using ordinary simple interest with exact time is often called the banker's rule. 
There are four different ways to calculate simple interest between mixing up exact simple interest and ordinary simple interest with exact time and approximate time. The banker's rule is the most common method. But that's it for today, so I hope this lesson helped you understand how to use exact time when calculating simple interest. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.